Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. Today is the 1st of December 2022, episode 2. So, in this he wants to talk about, in the last, in episode when we finished off where he said he wanted to talk to us, so to you, to me. Um, so let's do it. Bram Stoker, are you ready? Get your feet on the ground. It feels as though he's actually a very nervous man about speaking publicly. There's something with speech with him. There's something with speech and and being shown him as a young boy and not being heard. I feel as though he may have been surrounded by a lot of energy vampire himself. Vampire energy. Energy vampire. We talked about energy vampires in part one. Um, He's saying we're all connected, you know, every single one of us is connected. We all pulse into each other, but we also pulse out of each other. I was able to tap into the darkness of the world, the darkness of, of us, the darkness of ourselves, the darkness of myself. He said, I saw this dome of darkness over the planet and I saw it as a little boy. And I just saw it pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling on, on, on human beings, on humanity. And then I looked into the place where I lived and it was a state, there was that, there was also pulling that way. So we've got it pulled this way and we've got it pulled that way and we're pulled in all these different directions. It wasn't meant to be a masterpiece, Dracula. I was shocked when it became one. I actually didn't like the book. He didn't like it. He didn't like it when he wrote it. He didn't like it. It was too bitter. I didn't even want to get it published. I didn't even want to put it out of there. It felt as though it'd be, at the end of the, it felt as it was a fragment of my soul. It was a fragment of my soul. And when I looked at it, at the end, when I looked back over that period of writing and, and, and every word within that book, I saw myself within every word. My fears, my phobias, my hopes, my dreams, my despair, my darkness, my light. He's saying there's great portals. He's showing me Whitby now and he's saying there's great portals. He's showing me Whitby, he's showing me Scotland, he's showing me Ireland. He said he's showing me London as well. He said these portals are all over the world, he says, but they're more potent in certain areas, especially around the UK shores. He said there's something within the sea and water and nature in the UK that is actually in nowhere, no other place in the world. And he says, in spirit, I've travelled to other places to find this nirvana that's within the UK shores. Um, and these portals go far back to ancestors. And he's showing me people sat around campfires and telling stories. He's showing me shamans and dru dru druids, dru druids, 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 druids opening amazing portals of light they were just opening i mean the, the others open portals of dark we know that but these are people that were opening amazing portals of light activating the ley lines the chakra systems within the uk this is people will be get offended that i said that because i'm not mentioning other countries but they must understand that at the time he was a man of he was irish he was born in ireland traveled over to england london it was all about the UK. He says many people don't know how to activate these portals anymore. Many people don't know how to activate the portals or work with them. He says many people can access them without even realising they're accessing them. He's showing me a place in Whitby and I think it's where he used to stop because the other day I'm going cold right there so there's some type of activity there um there's a bench or somewhere used to stop on the front you know those of you that know Whitby in Yorkshire there's a, like um, 
a crescent of old posh houses that would have been nice hotels back in the day and it, you know where the whalebone thing is it, it's round there it's round it's nowhere near the amusements it's i'll get a picture right and i'll put it on my social media the portal one of the portals is right there there's also a portal at the top um where the abbey is and that's what draws people up those steps and he says many people get up there and they have funny do's funny turns they go a bit funny some people have even fainted up there and they've oh it's the vampire energy oh and they go all silly he said they go so silly over it he said it's not his energy it's his swirling energy and it's just if you can access them people can access them healing people can go up to the, up to the top of that abbey and feel invigorated but people can also feel drained it's all about how you how you are as a person what you can access and what you can't access he says but the truth is everyone's an alchemist it's just we switch it off and then we spend hundreds and thousands of lifetimes switching it back on again but he says these portals are actually starting to fire back up again and he says the crazy thing is some of how some houses are built on all there's millions of these portals he's showing me there's millions um bronte parsonage is one of those one of those portals howarth is on those portals howarth moors are on those portals um and actually this firing up of mother earth this she's firing up her energy and she's firing up these portals and these druids and these energies are coming back into reincarnation and visiting these places and not even some of them are aware that they're doing it and some of them just by being so say i was a druid okay and i go to whitby, whitby, whitby abbey and i stand at whitby abbey and i'm just you know i'm just taking pictures and i'm just there me just being there is firing this back up and i'm not sat there with crystals and i'm not sat there with anything i'm just being there so my frequency that past frequency that frequency of the druid of the alchemist is starting to fire these portals back up and he's saying a lot of people are affected by these portals he must is reiterating these are not dark portals um they're firing back up because they're actually building their strength again um so it's causing a lot of freakish weather. He's drawing my attention to actually Whitby Cliff. Is it Whitby Cliff? And it's some of the stuff that's some of the, the earth that's falling into the sea. That's interesting. He's saying when earth falls into the sea, it's not that the earth is disappearing. He said what happens is it's, she just purges fragments of herself, so she throws fragments of herself into the sea. You see, what Mother Earth does is she absorbs her energy, all, all the heavy energy from the Earth, and she'll get it into one place, like a part of the cliff, and she'll put it in. And she goes through periods of having to do that. He says, but don't worry, because she also can regenerate. And she's going to start regenerating new islands and new countries. Countries that were once small are going to start becoming bigger. Um... It's all about Atlantis now and Lemuria and lost civilizations that have been lost coming back. He said there's also lost civilizations and he's showing me a discovery of witches now. Where is it there a discovery of witches where the the dark place is it the dark place where they'll don't get controversial, Claire. <laughs> where it disappears it's in Rome, isn't it? It's in Rome and they go there and the bad is it the baddies that can see it? And it appears and then it disappears. Well, he's saying there's actually ancient civilizations on the earth that have disappeared because had they been invested, had they been discovered, they'd have been manipulated. He said, but there are many secret civilizations. Um, he said planets then as well. I wasn't expecting this. Many secret civilizations that, and secret, what am I looking at? Countries areas that have disappeared and they're going to reappear as if by magic but this is all tied into the frequency the dark vampire energies that we're struggling with in various ways shapes or forms are diminishing daily he says the darkness is not as strong as it was back in the victorian times it's diminishing daily um he says he's done a, he was interested and fascinated with the esoteric. He was fascinated with 
the dark, the light, the... It, he's never really got to experience it much in his incarnation. He said, actually, if you met me as a person, as Bram Stoker, you'd think that I'd have pictures of cath um, vampires and that I'd be pagan or that I'd be... In he says, I actually wasn't into any of it. I wasn't into any of it because actually the times that I lived in, it wasn't actually a, a wise thing to do. I was always kind of scared because of the stuff he'd seen back... He'd seen stuff of the... Something he'd seen back in Ireland as a child. Some people using the light for dark and messing about and manipulating it. And it scared him a bit. He says, but since death and then you go over to, over to the other side and you start to transition. And you can see these ancient civilizations and you can see these portals. And you can travel wherever you want to travel. And that's why I want to come back and I want to share it with you. Because there's so much more than where you're at right now. Um, the animals are affected by this, but they will come back into tune. He said there's a lot of fear mongering out there. I know we talked about that yesterday. There's a lot of fear mongering out there at the minute about the animals and about, oh, and the grew. Oh. He said they, they, the animals are very clever at regenerating and coming back. He said because anything that's living that's got a pulse, pulsing, any new frequency of energy that comes in, it affects it in different ways. Some people it knocks them out and they're just sleeping all the time. Some people it brings out emotion. Um, but he's saying, I promise you all, there are many of you that are in fear at the minute, and I promise you all that that light is winning. And that he's showing me the group of people that were in that book that were trying to bring the light up. And he says, there's more, I'm literally icy cold, there's more of those groups of people that are coming up all over the place. He said that a lot of them are not online and they're not shouting from the rooftops. They're actually quietly, diligently doing the work. Um, he's showing me his own past life as a druid. Um... He showed me a future life as an author, another, another. He's gonna, he's, is he, he's gonna, this is a, there's a, there's a future life where he comes back as an author and he's able to be himself in that lifetime and he goes back into writing very similar books like this. But he brings in another thread in these books. I don't know what this book... I don't know if he's here he now as an incarnation. He's here now as an incarnation. He says, because there's, there's different facets of us. Um, I, I got asked a good question the other day. How far can you go back to channel? I can go back to the beginning of time. Because as a soul, you've got different aspects of yourself. So for all the Bram Stoker is in heaven... He will have present incarnations ongoing and he'll have past incarnations ongoing. So there's more. There's, again, he said, this is what we just don't understand. We just think we're here. And once we're gone, we're gone. But actually, there's different incarnations of you. You know, they could, there's you sat here, but then there's a different version of you in another part of the world. We're all, and again, take it back down to it. We're all interconnected. We're all from the same stardust. He's talking about reptilian energy now. He says the reptilians are backing off. It seems to me you know about this, Claire. Explain it. <laughs> um, I've said this before about reptilians. There's good and there's dark in reptilian in the reptilian species. And a lot of the good reptilians, a lot of us are working with good reptilians at the minute to help the good reptilians. You know when there's a crime and police go undercover to become, I don't know, a dealer or whatever. And they go in and they... Well, this is basically what happens. Basically, what the what the light does, it works with the, the reptilians of light. And they tell them about what happens when the species has gone dark. He says, but even that species, the part of that species that has gone dark is actually going to be receiving new codes. New codes. I wasn't expecting any of this. I wasn't expecting it. It's diminishing. It's diminishing and all species will one day be able to live together. Demons will go back to being angels. Even that, even the fact that we've got demons, the demons are fallen angels. 
it's almost like we do a mistake in our life we sleep with somebody we have a feeling about somebody we drink something take something break someone's heart and straight away we start self-sabotaging so it's almost like we're like the demon and the angel the angel because i can't be an angel anymore and it falls in that becomes a demon and it's rolling back on itself it says times are changing and demons are actually starting to transition back into being angels and he said and that's going to be coming when's it going to be coming um it's happening now in different he said which is he says me and other people that are starting to work with darker energies to understand them and to bring in teachers because darker energies are starting to transition into light hence last week's channeling if that makes sense <sighs> I wasn't expecting any of this. He says, I know you weren't. Um, Falls just paused. Um, he says, people look at this channel in Bram Stoker. Why? He says, when you go over, he says, you see so much and you learn so much. And why not share this? He says, I shared so much in Dracula and I want to share again. Um... Something about somebody coming from his bloodline that does a book to equal this. Um, he says there's many authors out there that are trying to tap into... He says it's almost like a form of energy theft. Oh yeah, I'm noticing this as well. They're, they're going into other people's work and they're trying to absorb it and then twist it to make their own. And you may be saying, well, there's only so many wizard books you can do or so many vampire books you can do. He said, but actually, these people are, are, are going into other people's and twisting it and making it their own work. And um, he doesn't like that. He says, make your own work up. Make your own work up. He says, there's different beings out there that we can be writing stories about. He says, there's different forms of wizards, different forms of galactic different forms of angel different forms of demon different form he said you humans think you know about all the species he says the species you've never even seen or heard of there's just species that you've just got no perception of and yet people just do wizard dracula wizard dracula wizard vampire wizard vampire witch and it's so much more he seems so much more I need to take some water. <laughs> Make sure I put that down. I'm smacking it some water. Um, what time are we on? Ley lines. Have you shown me some ley lines in Yorkshire? Obviously, we know Brontes came from Yorkshire. Fascinating. Sorry, I'm just having to process some of this information that's come through because it's fascinating. Um, he's saying people are going to start turning away from the telly onto books. He said more and more people are going to be turning into books. He said the world is going to be changing. He said the lights as we know it will go out. But as one light goes out, a new light will come on. Oh, this is going to be tapping into... I'm doing Harry Selfridge either next week or the week after where Harry Selfridge is going to be... Coming. Don't start confusing things. Well, Harry Selfridge is going to start coming in and talking about... Harry Selfridge was a man that lost it all. He owned Selfridges and he lost it all. And he's going to be coming in and helping people that are losing businesses. Um, but, you say, but back to Brown, pulling Brown back in... Um, Yeah, PB says people are going back to books. It says more people are going back into reading and turning their tellies off. It says, by the way, it says they're not going to be affording tellies. And this isn't a fear. They go, oh, I can't afford my telly. He says, really think about it. I can't afford my telly. So what? You can walk into a library. You can walk into a charity shop. It's actually encouraging people um, to give up books. They don't no longer read. I don't think I'm going to give this up. Because I don't know it's one of my favourite books. But I do actually, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I don't keep books. I give them to charity. Or I, I send them to Barter Books in Northumberland. I go to Barter Books in Northumberland and I exchange them for a docket and I get more books. But he says this thing about hoarding books. He says there's houses with 
bookshelves and bookshelves and bookshelves and he said people as people are transitioning through this awakening and and maybe not being paid as much he's very gentle with his words he's not a fear monger he said but there's some of these topics can scare people he said do not go into fear with it it's lovely what's coming and it's going to be worth it people will be turning to books he says people are going to be turning back to board games people are going to be turning back to conversation um he said if you live in a part of the country and the lights go out the reason the higher reason why the lights are going to go out is to make your third eye come awake he said if you think about druids and shamans and all the ancient the ancient masters they lived in a time without street lights without light without electricity and that's why their third eyes were so prominent because it was the only eye they had and that's why they had to work with the light because there was no other light to work with okay um, my light's gone funny again. Well, anyway, um, he said, but don't fear it. If your life is transitioning and you're losing something, don't fear it because you're losing something to go back to something better. Whew. Well, <laughs> wasn't expecting this. It's nice though, isn't it? This is what it's all about. This is why we channel. This is why we channel. Um, you know, what have you said yesterday, Clay? Are you going to channel some nice people? <laughs> are you going to channel some light people? Light people. And the truth is, we are all light. And how fascinating has this been? You get to sit with Bram Stoker, who's passed over and can bring through all that information. Now, if, I just, if I'd have been just doing a fairy or an angel, or I'm not just saying just, yeah, well, that's what fairies and angels say, but someone like Bram Stoker that can really, yeah, they've gone over and they've discovered that may, they may have had a dark time on earth, that they've gone over and discovered something much more lighter and brighter, and that they can bring that hope back. To me, that is just pure beautiful. Earth star activation, anchoring, Grounded action, Isis energy. Earth star activation. Is the Earth star in London? I believe it is. Emerald tablet activation. Cosmic ordering, divine alchemy, conscious manifesting. He's saying the world is going to become very noisy and there's going to be towers toppling left, right and centre. He's saying this is a time for really going within and don't feed into the fear. Um... This is the Earth region. This is really big stuff, is this, you know? This is fantastic. This is, I hope I'm describing this and passing this over, but this is real big stuff. It's Egypt as well, the stuff with Egypt. It's almost like, you know, when a movie, movie like, on, like, I don't know, Indiana Jones, where, where civilizations boom, pop up out of the ground. It's even like that in some places. Um, over the next hundred years, over the next hundred years, it's not going to be a quick fix, but it's already happening. Um, the, the anchors on these civilizations are starting to break away. They're starting to fire up as more people awaken and tap in. He says that people, if you think about it, there's no point this of happening a hundred years ago when people weren't aware of the their, their stuff. So humans are starting to wake up so they can anchor these. They're ready for when these civilizations come. See you in the next one. See you later. Bye.